Hey friends, welcome. Today we are going to discuss uh, consequences of inverse heat theorem. Now, before starting consequences of inverse heat theorem, uh, we will again revise what inverse theorem is. So basically, inverse theorem it tells us that the value of d delta g upon dt it approaches zero gradually as the temperature is lowered towards absolute zero so this value that is change in free energy with respect to temperature it approaches zero as we lower the temperature and as the temperature moves towards absolute zero so this is the nurst heat theorem and uh, again i want to tell you that um, the nurst or the third law of thermodynamics is basically because of the nurst heat theorem that is we can say that the third law of thermodynamics it was derived from nurst heat theorem and uh, we have also seen the mathematical form of nurst heat theorem that just we have to put limit t tends to 0 d delta g upon dt will be equal to limit t tends to 0 t delta h upon dt and both these values are equal to 0 as the temperature tends to 0 so this is the mathematical form of a nurst heat theorem and today we are going to discuss the consequences of nurst heat theorem so the first consequence of nurst heat theorem uh, we will start that we all uh, know that from first and second law of thermodynamics we can write that the change in the free energy can be written as vdp minus s dt and if you want to know where this came from i have already explained it in my fugacity lecture so that link i will be giving in the description so you may check from where uh, how this term came now as if we consider that our system is at constant pressure and when we are considering that system is at constant pressure then the change in pressure will be equal to zero so we can write dp will be equal to zero and if dp is equal to zero so this term will be equal to zero and hence we can write dg will be equal to minus s dt and further if we rearrange this equation we can write dg upon dt is equal to minus s at constant pressure okay now for change in the free energy okay entropy will also change so if we change free energy then entropy will also change so change we can write it as uh, d delta g upon dt at constant pressure will be equal to minus delta s and at absolute zero or from if we apply inert heat theorem that is we can apply limit on both hand sides so we can write limit of t tends to zero d delta g upon dt at constant pressure is equal to limit of t tends to zero minus delta s will be equal to zero you can multiply both hand side by minus s and hence we can remove the minus sign and again further we know that delta s suppose if we consider that s1 is our initial state and s2 is the final state so delta s can be written as s2 minus s1 so again this term we can write limit of t tends to 0 s2 minus s1 is equal to 0 and hence we can further write limit of t tends to 0 s2 will be equal to or i can write minus limit of t tends to 0 s1 is equal to 0 so i can take on this hand side and then i can remove the limit so i can write s1 will be equal to s2 okay so hence at as temperature tends to 0 the 
entropy of the system it remains same that is s1 and s2 are two different states so at two different states at as temperature is moving towards zero both the entropy of both the states are becoming equal so this forms the basis of our law of thermodynamics which tells us that at absolute zero the entropy of a perfectly crystalline substance or a entropy of a perfectly crystalline solid is zero so hence in the neighborhood of absolute zero all the process should occur without any change in the value of entropy so this is one of the another statement of nost heat theorem so this was the first consequence of nost heat theorem moving to the second consequence of nost heat theorem so uh, we all know that heat capacity at constant pressure can be written or it is equal to dh upon dt so this is at constant pressure and this uh, we already know from the first law of thermodynamics okay so we have already uh, you might have studied in first law of thermodynamics that is heat change in the heat change at constant pressure is equal to change in enthalpy at different temperature or with change in uh, temperature so now if we write change in the heat capacity that is if i write delta cp then this i can write it equal to t delta h upon dt at constant pressure and again we all know that from nost heat theorem again i can apply limit on both hand side and this will be equal to zero so i can write limit of t tends to zero d delta h upon dt is equal to limit of t tends to zero delta cp and that will be equal to zero and again delta cp it can be written as cp2 minus cp1 so C delta cp is nothing but it is the difference between the two states and hence we can write limit of t tends to 0 cp2 minus cp1 that is equal to 0 so now we can rearrange or we can again multiply both the limits with cp and then take cp on that hand side right hand side so we can write limit of t tends to 0 cp2 will be equal to limit of t tends to 0 cp1 and both are equal so we can remove the limit so we can write cp2 will be equal to cp1 so hence at temperature or as t tends to 0 the change in the heat capacity at two different states will also be same so we can say in the neighborhood of absolute zero heat capacity at constant pressure of the system it would also remain unchanged so this is also one of the we can say statements of nost heat theorem and this is one of the consequences of nost heat heat theorem so both these consequences it tells us that at absolute zero the entropy of the system remains constant as well as the heat capacity of the system remains constant all the heat capacity remains same so hope uh, the topics are clear thank you very much